Shalom. First things first, we want to give all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and the brothers on the four corners of the planet Earth that's been set up through faith to help seal the elect that the Lord brings in. We're going to jump right into the stories and the updates. Um, you got this whole situation with um, the uplifting of women because we know that this society is a queen of heaven society, man. It's a women uplifting society. It's backwards, man. So I was looking through a video. This video is not going to be too long. I'm not going to get into it too much, but I'm going to play it because I found it pretty interesting because it coincides with the scriptures. The Lord has told these women that there's a certain way they're supposed to be to, how you say, obtain to righteousness or be looked at as being righteous in the Lord's eyes. That's being under their man and being under a certain way of life. Okay? That's being to your man. This is speaking to an Israelite woman, unique girls, Latinos, and Native American women of those descents. The Lord is speaking to you when he says be under the submission of your man and that's an Israelite man, not some random man out here being a heathen. Okay? It's only dealing with the Israelite man and women. Okay? But right now I'm saying that this video that I found is uh, very interesting because the Lord told these women how to conduct themselves and you'll see by this video and I'll go into the scripts. Hey everybody, it's me Kareem from Are We Famous Now? You might have all seen a video of a woman walking for 10 hours in NYC while getting harassed. Well, I thought I'd do a different version. And in this version, we're going to have my friend walk for 5 hours in casual clothing and walk another 5 hours in hijab, which is the Muslim garb. We're going to see how both compare, and we're going to see the responses she gets. So check it out. Now, now you see she's changed. Now she's in modest apparel. Okay. Now these women want to talk about oh, they got problems. They want they want that attention, man. Because if they they can negate that by doing exactly what she's doing right now, and you can see her spirit changes because now all the men are looking at her. You know she might be doing this for this video, but you can tell that she liked that attention she was getting, man.
as you can see, no one has said anything to this. No one has said anything to this woman. So I'm gonna get into the script, and uh, we're gonna break exactly why this happened. This is the book of uh, First Timothy. This is the book of First Timothy two and nine. This is First Timothy two and verse nine. And it says, in like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest, modest. See, because she was in modest apparel. When she was in this apparel, that was modest. You see the difference? That's, she's got the so-called yoga pants on. She's got a, a shirt that's showing her bosom. Okay. She's got uh, her hair showing her, her glory. Okay, she's got it all out. But then here, as you see, same woman, same attractive so-called woman. She's a, she's an attractive woman. But you can see here all her all her glory is covered up, man. You know? So let's read it. It says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broad bordered hair or gold or pearls or costly array but which cometh it says but which cometh women professing godliness with good works let the women learn in silence with all subjection but I suffer not a woman to teach nor sub, uh, su uh, observe authority over the man but to be in silence but the main point was to show you that in modest apparel you negate those things if you don't want all of these that's why you have all these rapes ha happening because you have met women out there wearing these things of this nature that's enticing men. Okay? At the end of the day, you're enticing men wearing things of this nature. Because we can see your hair. We can see we can see your goodies, as it may say. So that's why the Most High set that up. So let's get to the next verse. This is the verse of Deuteronomy. Go in the Old Testament. This is Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. This is Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. And it says, The women shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall they man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy power. If a bird's, it, it says, If a bird's nest chance to be for thee in the way of a tree or in the ground. Oh, that's it on that. But it's mainly saying, Look, she's wearing pants. She's got these yoga pants on. That's pertaining to a man. Because women aren't supposed to wear pants. They're supposed to wear things of this nature. A skirt. Okay? Modest modest apparel. Alright, let me jump to the next one. This is the book of 1 Peters. Let's get the book of 1 Peters. 3 and... 3 and... 3? It says... Who, Whoso adorn, adorn uh, says whoso adorning, it says whoso adorning, let it not be that outward adorning, of plaiting. Uh, let me go in verse three and one. It says likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that in any it says that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Let me read that one more time. It says, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they, it says, while they behold your chast chastity conversation coupled with fear, whoso adorn, let it not be with outward adorning, with plaiting the hair, and with wearing of gold and putting on of uh, on of apparel, but let it be with hidden. It says, "Let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which it is not corruptible, even the ornaments of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of the Most High, of great price." So mostly it says, "Look now with outward." When she was with that outward stuff, men were uh, attaining to her and trying to get at him. But when she adorned herself, she she walked through the streets with, with how you say, with a little bit more peace. 
So that's pretty much all I'm going to touch on that. I'm not going to go too much because it's a, it's a thing that should be known. But this is showing you. That's a proof to show you what these women are, are, are wearing those skimpy outfits. And then when they wear modest apparel. <coughs> so let's jump into the next article. And it says, making enemies America can't afford. <laughs> Congress votes more sanctions on Russia. So, yeah, we're still at it, man. The Russian society is, is falling down because that's how Esau affects you. If he wants to really, he don't got to send no missiles or bullets or, or different things. Esau has many devices. And one of his devices is ruining your economy because Esau controls the money system. So if you're not under his guise and you're not under the things that he wants you to be, he'll affect your economy and destroy it by sanctions or he'll he'll lower the oil prices or by different measures, man. And I'm going to go and show you that this Ebola thing is tying in with that too, especially in the areas of Sierra Leone and Liberia, man. I'm going to show you that Esau is doing those things. But let's read this. It says, making enemies America can't afford. Congress votes more sanctions on Russia. It says Congress. It says Congress long ago learned that public certainty uh, makes it harder to pass bad bills. So, in the midst of negotiations to avoid another government shutdown earlier this month, both houses of Congress ram rammed through new sanctions against Russia as part of the misnamed Ukraine Freedom Freedom Support Act of 2014. Indeed, the House version, H.R. 5859, was introduced earlier the same day and approved by the uh, sp sp Spraz crowd late, last, late at night. The sen uh, Senate le legislation, S-2828, passed on a voice vote. The measure, sanction uh, measure, uh, the measure sanctions Russia's weapon exports and oil production imports and the financial institution which... Felicity, uh, felicitate such transactions. Targets gas proms if it is withholds uh, significant gas supplies from specific states. Provide money to strengthen uh, dramatic institutions institutions and political and civil society organizations. In Russia bear the left it says bar the lefting lifting of sanctions so long as Moscow supports groups undermining the peace, security and stability, sovereignty or territorial integrity of Ukraine, boost financially transfer uh, says boast financial transfers to Kiev, orders US officials to work with Ukrainian to solve such problems as electricity and fuel shortages, author uh, authorized weapon transfers to Kiev and increase funds for government Russian language broadcast services. So what America's doing is they're pulling Ukraine under their wing with these things that they're giving Ukraine because nothing that Esau gives is free. Because Esau's a man of usury. And usury doesn't have to come back in money. It comes back in different ways, man. It comes back in we know usury is using of taxes and and and, and come back of getting money on on on, on things. But now Esau is going to get money. They're trying to get Kiev into the umbrella of NATO. And Russia's not allowing it because that's on Russia's back, store, back step, man. So what are they going to do by giving these different things like gas? Because Esau creates the problem. He's the one that set up the rebels to, 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 to go into the coup. So that coup that they've set up is just a, another way for uh, America to come in there and take over under the the how you say puppets they're gonna they already set up the choc chocolatier puppet which is the president in uh ukraine right now all right so i'm showing you esau's working man this situation is getting more and more up up to flaming up all right and then now you have these epidemics and these different diseases that are flying through now i'll post lord willing i'll, I'll leave the the um the link so you brothers can read these articles it says with with 15 children dead the CDC declares flu epidemic now what you ignorant people that went and got all these flu shots you're the one that's getting sick man because the, the devil put the flu in you man that's why a lot of these epidemics are happening because these are the people that took their children 
and took their cells to get these flu shots and now they're coming down sick and, and dying, man. So let's play this. The new and worrying numbers about the flu, the CDC is reporting a big jump in flu activity in America. 22 states now reporting high flu activity. That's up from 13 states the week before, and ABC's Dr. Richard Besser is here with more on this. So is, is part of the reason for yet another early flu season the fact that the vaccine this year was a poor match for the strain of the flu that's out there? I, I don't think that's what's going on, but there is something on you. Exactly what is going on. The damn flu shots didn't work, man. For all you people trusting in me, so how much more to chip, man? When you, you, you burb, you stupid ignorant people man when you you, you want to trust in the esau look at his corruptness this man is is corrupt to the bone to the gristle man there's nothing righteous about this damn man you trusting in his shots they, 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 go ahead man go ahead going on with the flu for the past four years flu has started to peak at the end of december it used to be that that flu didn't have its rise until february or early march but for some reason flu has been coming earlier and earlier and hitting during that holiday season you know i mentioned the fact that the vaccine is not a great match for the strain of the flu that's out there given that is it still worth getting a flu shot if you don't have one already i think it is you know th this year you're right the the flu strain that's out there causing disease is not the one that's in the vaccine but there may be some level of cross protection we won't know that probably until march or april when they look back but i still think it, it should provide some protection it's the best thing that you can do to cut down your risk go get the shot you're protecting yourself and you're protecting people around you potentially so one last question we did speak to at least one doctor who said that he worried that the strain that's out there this year is particularly dangerous for children you do not share that view why not well the flu is always dangerous for children you know, in, on an average year 100 children die so far this year 15 it's worth protecting your kids all right rich besser thank you very much we appreciate it so i'll post this article to show you that more diseases and things are coming to esau so let's go into the next one to show you that the Ebola thing, because I've spoken to my father, which is back. And now to a woman and, um, who gave cuisine the royal treatment. As the former market. chef for the British royal family, Lara spoke to the woman who used to serve the young prince. Right now, this is show you that this Ebola thing is affecting, because um, it's two birds, one stone, because a lot of Israelites are in West Africa. And around this time, you have Israel that's gaining a little bit of traction over there so what the Lord has done by letting Esau release this disease he's he's cut that man because it says no man shall buy you when it says coming over here with with uh, Israel being in America and being under slavery no man shall save us okay that means even ourselves we don't have the power to save ourselves so Jake over there was gaining leeway with this with the economy and stuff so Esau was was ordered I say that much to le release these things over there so now the economy is tanking again because Sierra Leone was one of the fastest growing economies in West Africa if not all of Africa okay so now that's showing you Esau because what is over in Af West Africa valuable valuable um, mining things of diamond gold bauxite the things you use in computers they don't tell you those things the things that they're using in the computers we use today in the circuit boards they're being mined in West Africa in parts of the countries over there so that's showing you that Esau is taking advantage of those places because now they're gaining independence on themselves and I'll play this video to show you Struggling with the Ebola outbreak have severely hurt the region's economy. Sectors that were showing some signs of growth, like tourism, have been hit hard, especially in the three countries most affected by the virus, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. CCTV's Katarina Vitozzi... But to say what uh, I spoke to my father, and um, he told me that if you get caught out of your house after the, the curfew, you're, you're, you're taken and you're fined 500 leones and what and five five hundred thousand leones in Sierra Leone money I mean it's not it, it, it's to us money it's not that much but over there it's quite a bit of money alright to show you that it's like martial law over there this past so called week at where things stand now in this report's notebook 
I'm Katarina Vitozzi, and this is Freetown. With it, and then this is where my father's at. It's Freetown, Sierra Leone. Okay, this is where I was born at. Is in this this place right here. Okay, to show you, and when I when we were there, the economy was not booming. Esau was there. He used the rebels to go in there and to to take over the region, so they could use to get the diamonds. And they saw show you that in a uh, what's that movie? Um, Blood Diamond. They showed you that in that in that movie. On white sand beaches, Sierra Leone was fast becoming the darling of the West African tourist trade. That's until Ebola struck. Prior to Ebola, um, around about last year, about this time, we were quite optimistic as to the direction that things were heading, uh, because uh, you know the road infrastructure was being improved. We had additional hotels that were coming online. We had international brands like uh, the Radisson Blue, uh, the Place Resort opening um, along the peninsula area. So there was a lot of reason to be optimistic. Uh, the numbers were still growing, <coughs> uh, but during Ebola, unfortunately, everything has turned uh, you know, 360. And uh, our numbers at the moment are completely they're at zero as far as tourism goes. And it's the same story across the region, even in countries not affected by the outbreak. Hotels and resorts across West Africa are reporting lower than average numbers for this, their peak season. But Ebola hasn't just chased away the tourists. It scared away some international investors too, especially in some flourishing economic sectors like mining, agriculture and oil production. In Liberia, the world's largest steel and mining group ArcelorMittal had to put expansion plans on hold after contractors building a new site pulled out because of Ebola. But unlike other international businesses, ArcelorMittal was determined to stay put and keep up its iron ore production. And we also realize that if we, with, with what we are doing in Liberia, the economic impact, if we were to um, stop the operation, it will have a major economic impact on the um, economy in Liberia. Also, you talk about the workforce, so many employees, so many families that depend on the company for you know, their day-to-day -day survival. And so we, as long as we continue you know, to make sure that we are keeping our employees safe. We feel that we can continue. The World Bank says the best way to woo back business is to get the Ebola outbreak under control. For now, growth forecasts are grim. With Sierra Leone the worst off of the three countries hardest hit by Ebola, Liberia and Guinea being the other two. The World Bank says that Ebola has cost the three worst affected countries $2 billion in terms of lost income and that's not taking into account the losses faced by its regional neighbors with growing unemployment and rising inflation leaders will be hoping for a better economic future in 2015. Katarina Vitozzi, CCTV, Freetown. And uh, so that's showing you that Esau, he's, he's attacking those places man but that's the Lord that's, that's, that's showing you to look to the Most High send his son back Yahweh Shai to come and take us from this, this, this position that we're in, we're, we're going to feel it, man. We're going to catch these things. We're under punishment. So that's why we pray for our rest. We pray that the Lord take us out of this, this place, man, and gives us rest. And that's going to the elect, the 144,000 and 130 Yahweh Okay? So that's why we have to keep hope, man. We're, we're getting close. But you got to keep an eye on these things because... We're, we're getting to that time that the Lord's going to deliver us, man. Okay? But it ain't going to be by our own hands and, and, and the economy of Esau. That's not going to bring us into our rest. The Lord's going to take us out of this, deliver us, beam us up, and then bring us back down to set the earth aright, man. So with that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh. Why Yahweh Shai? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Much love to the elect brethren on the four corners of the planet Earth that set up through faith. Alright, keep faith. Shalom.